like the real deal now. Woo! Gonna kick this sorry ass out on the street. How's it going, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to week number 27 of the Lowdown Show Brand Wars on the Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. We are your Canadian-based RWB podcast that discusses and reviews Monday Night Raw and Tuesday Night Smackdown Live from the past week, as well as our Twitter poll segment called the Luke Gallows Polls and WWE Headlines, where we talk about any important news in the WWE. Every week, the Lowdown Show is broadcasted live on Spreaker at Spreaker.com slash NHBWP. And after it is done, it is posted in full on YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes, Spreaker itself, and Stitcher. We are everywhere for your enjoyment and is easier and convenient for you to listen to us. If you'd like to join in on the conversation and have your thoughts, opinions, and questions read on and discussed on the podcast, tweet us at no holds bar WP or by dropping a comment in the YouTube section below. I am your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters, and every week I'm continuing to be joined by my co-host, the boss, Mr. Cord himself, the blissful, Corporate Cappy. I'm not very blissful this week. No, no, not blissful at all. No. Really blissed off exactly. this week after No Mercy. That was awful. And we'll get into that. We will get into yeah. it. We'll get into it. You had a good week. You finally got your uh, right plaque. Finally, I got the plaque. If you guys didn't see it, it's up on YouTube, the unboxing. I got the right one this time. I was actually, like, scared as hell before opening it. Like, I did the slit, and I could see a little piece of the plaque, and I'm like, oh, my God, am I getting the wrong one again? Am I going to get two free plaques? Am I going to have to just have, like, a wall of plaques that I never ordered before? <laughs> Until you finally get the Owens Get the plaque. Kevin Owens, but I got it. I opened it. I was so happy I got it. It looks nice. I love the quality of those plaques. Those are like really good plaques. For the price we pay for them, I think it's really good. Um, no, so no rant this week? No, I can't think of anything. Like, Well, the rant will come in the review, as you know what I'm going to be <laughs> ranting about. But I got like no daily rant. Like, It's been a good week this week, except for other things that I don't like talking about. Uh, a little personal to me. But you know what? I set that aside for you guys in the Lowdown Show, for you listeners out there and our and our fans. I put that aside so we can provide you with our reaction, our reviews yeah. for the best thing going in sports entertainment. And that oh, is the I WWE. I thought you were going to say it, Austin 316. Oh, yeah. Huge Lee fan here. And a big Ooh. night last night. Four yeah. goals. Ugh. Uh, better, you know what? That's better than a lot of things that happened this week in the WWE. So let's <laughs> just was. say, let's just keep it at that. So before we get into our Twitter, our Twitters, our Twitter tweets, Twitter errs, Twitter errs. I have to point something out, and I have I've missed done it the last couple of shows. You know, I that was my bad. I botched, guys. My I botched bad. hard. My bad. My zone me. <laughs> um, gotta get my YouTube shoutouts out there. And these guys, I guys, they they love the show. I, I they comment on they love when we release our episodes. So I, we appreciate guys. Appreciate the love. We love that you guys tune in. Um, I always forget to mention them. They give us some pretty good comments on our YouTube when we post a podcast on there. So this is your shout out, guys. And we have five of them. Our top five. Number one goes out to X Gilly Sniper Six. He always loves when we post the lowdown show, and he always gives us, uh, you know, some good comments and some uh, interesting com- conversational comments. I- I'll say. Um, next is your boy King Scampoli. Yeah, <laughs> who well, likes to put beat up Cappy. I, apparently, I've made the list. I don't know what <laughs> list. You've made it. Yeah, whatever it is, I'm really scared. <laughs> so thank you, King Scampoli. We also got Josh G. Dominics. I hope I'm saying these right, guys. I apologize if I'm not. Uh, he, he provides some uh, some interesting uh, comments as well. A lot of good questions. Uh, they're always thorough. I like his I like his comments. We got Sam Wells who tunes in, tunes in from time to time. May not comment, but he does uh, tune in. We appreciate the love. And also recently, the Secret Detectives 1. We appreciate the love, guys. Um very, 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 very much appreciated uh, what you guys do for the podcast and the views. And guys, hey, join in on the conversation on Twitter. Go get Twitter, even if it's just to make in a Twitter account just for the hell of it to follow us and follow yeah. our tweets. It's guys, probably just, easier to get a hold of us on yeah, Twitter. Yeah. So, yeah, it's easier. And then you can join in on the conversation while we're tweeting about Raw and SmackDown. So go make a quick account. Doesn't matter what it is. You can name it whatever the hell you want. Maybe even uh, name it the YouTube name so it's easier to find you. Um, so yeah, do it guys. So we, we like, we like Twitter better. Twitter is easier than a lot of things. You know? oh. We could have you guys just send us emails, but then we get irrelevant sending us like three emails at a time <laughs> could create like a giant book out of his tweets. 
<laughs> we appreciate it though, really. Yeah, we do. we do. Just love bugging you. Yeah. So about that, let's get into the tweets, shall we? Let's do it. Oh yeah. So with the tweets, um, we we asked you guys to give us questions, but this is not from a Twitter. This is from a from a YouTube comment, yep. and that is from King Scampoli. His question to us is: Has the WWE brand split draft been a bust? Hmm. I say it has been in certain aspects. Yeah. Raw has been really bad at points. Yeah. It, it's because it need, it's and again, I think the main thing about that it's Raw is too long. If Raw was two hours and SmackDown was two hours, we'd be golden, and the brand split would make sense. But now it's just you don't have enough content on Raw right now, and the the, the, the roster room to yeah. make Raw successful for three hours at a time. You could do it when it was, when there wasn't a brand split, when everyone was on the same. <laughs> Excuse me. Same roster. Yeah. Now they're just trying to find things to fill the time, and it's usually squash matches, which no one gives a fuck about. Yeah. So, so yeah, it, it, it's a bust in a way, but then it's also a good thing because we've been wanting a draft for like the last yeah. two years. We were doing this that, podcast to actually stick to a draft, not have guys float over on these super shows. And yeah. Crap. Oh my god, and how bad SmackDown was in the past. Yeah. So I think it was I think for Raw it's been a bust. I think for SmackDown it's been fantastic. Oh, it's been great. This is the best thing that's happened for SmackDown in a long and time. And for it to go live as well, that was a huge uh, yeah. deal as well. Yeah. Even though they're like right next to each other, it works out schedule-wise and you know, we're not waiting that long. NXT's on Wednesdays and like they they have live events throughout the weekend and it, it, you need the wrestlers to have a, a break, yeah. you know. It's good that they have this long break. I mean, before it was always taped on Tuesday, so they had a break regardless. But, you know, it's a break for the fans. So, you know, you have too much wrestling in those two days. You can jam pack wrestling and Raw on, on Mondays, Tuesdays on SmackDown, and you have that week break just to recuperate, you know, just do, your, do other stuff. Go, do go other stuff. watch other stuff, you know? Yeah, go go to a live event maybe if it's in your area, you know? Yeah. But, yeah, I guess into your question, King Scampoli, it's a bust in certain ways. Yes. So we're trying to get at his other question was kind of a question. He says, what do you think? He's going to the Royal Rumble. He said, who do you think is going to win? Uh, I can't. There's so many people right now I could choose. I, uh, if I had to pick one or the other, if Balor's healthy enough, he's probably going to come back and win. I don't know who's going to win. I just think that it's going to be a Raw superstar. Ooh. Don't think SmackDown? No. no? I think it's going to be a Raw guy. Yeah. Then it's either going to be, for me, it'd be Balor or Sami Zayn, for sure. 100%. I wanted to say Sami Zayn. <laughs> I'd love to. I'd love, I'd love for him to win. But I think it's going to be definitely a raw guy for the first one. Yeah. So thanks for your question there, King Scampoli. So, you know, if you got more questions, just, you know, either make a Twitter account or leave them in the YouTube section. We'll I'll try to get to them. I'll, I'll remember them. I'm going to try my absolute best from now on, guys. I've been botching a lot. I'm trying to do less botches. Getting out of the jobber state I am and getting into the, the active superstar I'm state. Moving up like James Ellsworth. <sighs> we'll talk about that later. <laughs> um, so into the tweets, guys. And we start off. With a number one fan on Twitter, and we got a special surprise prom- for you, yep, we Michael Chow. We promised you your entrance theme, and here it is. You, you love so good to me. That is right, Michael Chow. That is your entrance theme. <laughs> Our boy Rico from the past. We've chosen it. We've narrowed it down to this thing. We think it fits you perfect, I should say. Looking good all the time, right? <laughs> there is your entrance stream as promised. So we'll get into your tweets now, Michael Chow. He says, are they seriously setting up Slater and Rhino and Spirit Squad feud? Hashtag SmackDown Live Creative is seriously going to hashtag let down city. <laughs> oh, God. I would be so pissed if that was a feud. <laughs> I've got a uh, I've got a poll for you later about what they think of the Spirit Squad. Okay, <laughs> we'll see that in the Luke Gallows polls. He also puts, "I'm seriously switching to hashtag Team Raw. No Mercy was BS. SmackDown was BS. This might ha- this might have been the one of the worst post pay per view shows ever." I, I sort of agree. I it was okay. It wasn't worst. Either. It was bland. It was very, very blank, except for one thing, but it was bland. To me, SmackDown gets a pass, because they've had, like, four good shows in a row. So, they're not like Raw, where they have one good show and then four horrible ones. I don't know. Like, SmackDown could have been bad. You know, I I agree with that. It gets a pass for me this week. They're they're okay to be just okay. (laughs) Like, they get get their get-out-of-jail-free card there. He also puts in, it's a question, Raw is making history with the Women's Hell in the Cell match. 
Thoughts on SmackDown possibly making history with a women's TLC match? Hashtag yes. Ooh, want to up the ante, Daniel? Yeah. Bryan. So when that'd December a, comes around, make that happen. A women's TLC match. That would that'd be, be oh sick. my god. That'd be unbelievable. I I think it's a good idea, and I think it might happen. I, I don't know. I just love that the women are continuing to break the barriers and things that they've never done before. Yeah. Different types of matches that we've never seen before. I think it's great. I think, I, I hope to God that actually happens. I want, that'd be interesting to see. A TLC match. Can you imagine two women going through a table? Well, God. Some people don't even want to see the Hell in a Cell women's match. Yeah, they're scared. It, they're, yeah. Like, come on, guys. But, but let's be honest. It's not like the Hell in a Cell matches like we've seen We're in the past. We're not going to see Mick Foley get thrown, like, you know what I mean, thrown off the cell. Or you're, <laughs> you're, you're going to see freaking Charlotte go like through the cage and bust her back open or go ahead for first and start bleeding that's not gonna happen they'll use the cage to an extent but the the main the mo the main match is gonna be in the ring and a little bit outside the ring yeah it's not gonna escape the cage they're not gonna escape the cage and go to the top that's not happening it's gonna break when roman reigns spears rusev through it yeah and that's gonna be the end of the match (laughs) (laughs) so anyways moving on to at salvis 94 casey salvis on twitter he puts great show can't wait for smackdown versus raw at Survivor Series, just like the old days. Yeah, I like it that they're doing it at Survivor Series, not having the stupid bragging rights pay per view. Yeah, thank God. I think, was, I, I think they need to start. The stupid back. trophy they brought yeah. out too. <laughs> I think they need to start bringing back Survivor yeah. Series to like something special yeah. every year. But like seriously, who the fuck cares about bragging rights? I know, but I feel like like Survivor Series has lost lost its its, its thunder. You know what yeah. I mean? Because of bragging rights. Bragging rights in the past ruined Survivor Series. It's stupid. Moving on, we got a tweet from at WWE Locker Talk. Wow. They do a fantastic US-based WWE podcast, and we love to enjoy listening to them. They tweet at us. They put, Raw had a really good show this week, but SmackDown had James Ellsworth. SmackDown wins. <laughs> I can't say that I disagree with Locker uh, Talk. I got a lot to say about that, which we'll get into later. But Locker Talk, go check them out, guys. WWE Locker Talk on Twitter and follow them on Twitter. Or on, go check them out on YouTube, I'm sorry. Yeah. And go follow them on Twitter. Moving on to Tony Mercer at Recram Why Not on Twitter. He puts, both shows were solid this week. A strange highlight was James Ellsworth involvement. Next week should be interesting. <laughs> See? Everyone's jumping on Ellsworth 316, baby. God. <laughs> Anyways, moving on to our boy Relevance at Forlorn on Twitter. He puts, no mercy was a great pay-per-view. Okay, so he has a uh, different reaction to Michael Chow. So was SmackDown. SmackDown won this week. Raw was okay, but not great. SmackDown was good, but not great as well. SmackDown, 6 out of 10. Raw, 4.7 out of 10. Ooh. Some, good, some good ratings there. All right. He also puts, Hell in the Cell having three cage matches is pointless. None of the feuds deserve to be in one. It's just a gimmick pay-per-view that lists meaning. I don't know. I feel like the, if they're going to have a gimmick pay-per-view, every match should be in yeah, it. Yeah, but it kinda, now it's only three, so like it's... Yeah, it's more than what we're used to, but you usually get one. They just need to. Scr- I, I kind of agree with them. I don't think Hell in a Cell should be a pay per view. It should just, it should be, just be like Unforgiven, bring yeah. back or Armageddon, and just have the match itself, the main event in Hell in a Cell, and have that be the woman's one because Roman Reigns and Rusev doesn't need to be in Hell in a Cell. I could care less about that match. Uh, Kevin Owens and Seth Rollins could have a match not in a non Hell in a Cell, and it'll still sell. It'll still people will still tune in, and you can do something with Chris Jericho if you want to interfering or something. Like, you don't need that. That doesn't need to be in the Hell in Cell either. I think they should just need to scrap it. This should be the last year, and then, you know, we get no more. Uh, he puts, Hell in the Cell has no meaning. It's just a subscription. It's just four subscriptions. Hell in the Cell has truly lost its meaning. The last great Hell in the Cell match was Taker versus Lesnar. I think he's referring to the one at No Mercy 2002 or the one they had at Hell in the Cell last year. I mean, even the one they had at Hell in a Cell last year was really good. But then they also had a really, really good Hell in a Cell match back when it was Biker Taker at No Mercy 2002. So, and that was for the title. Mm. So Interesting. Thanks for your tweets, Forlorn. Not, uh, no storybook tweets, but you know what? I love it. Three tweets yeah. at a time. We can get it all in and just yeah, have a good discussion. I like it. Thanks. Moving on, Greg on tour at Craig Messi on Twitter. He puts the greatest man that ever lived, James Ellsworth, is the new face that runs the place after beating AJ SmackDown beats Raw. (laughs) I'm (sighs) loving it. My lord. Last set of tweets. One comes from Who Trans Superman. He puts the roster and time for SmackDown Live is perfect. Almost no one is let lost in the shuffle. Saw Vaude Villains and now Natty. Yeah, where are Did they? Did you just say that no one is left in the... Sh- in There's the- lost in the shuffle. Even on Raw? 
uh, not on SmackDown. Oh, he's just okay. talking about SmackDown. Oh, okay. Is he was talking about Rod, except for Van Dango because I don't know and, and, and Tyler, Tyler Breeze. Bre- Tyler Breeze had a backstage segment looking for Fandango. Oh. I don't know what the hell happened. <laughs> And the last tweet has nothing to do with Raw or SmackDown, and he didn't really give us uh, a reaction this week. Gamma and you won. We are uh, disappointed in you. Yeah. He, but I pulled a tweet that he tweeted out. As he put, I predict Finn Balor winning the Royal Rumble if he's healed up, but then if not, Sami Zayn. So he agrees with me. All right. Interesting. But those are your tweets, guys. Appreciate them as always. And now we'll get into the part of the show where we have our Twitter polls. The Luke Gallows Polls. That's right. Welcome to the Luke Gallows Polls, our sh- part of the show where we love to read you Twitter polls from our boys at, at Fun WWE Polls. They do some fantastic polls, some funny polls, some serious polls, all polls for your liking. And it is hosted by none other than Corporate Cappy. Corporate Cappy, take it away. Which one of these superstars is the worst Raw champion? Oof. Kevin Owens, Roman Reigns, Sasha Banks, or TJ Perkins? Roman Reigns wins. <laughs> 100%. I already know it's going to win. 48% only. Only? Right. <laughs> Who came in second? TJ Perkins. 20%. Why? <laughs> it just started. Kevin Owens, 19, and Sasha Banks, 9, baby. Oh, God. <laughs> what? TJ Perkins just became champion. He's not even what, a month what in. What do you want from a cruiserweight champion? Like, honestly. <laughs> My lord. Maybe it's because people don't really know who he is yet. Yeah, yeah, he used to be uh, suicide in TNA. Yeah, but for the casuals that probably vote on this? Hey, they're allowed to say TNA now. <laughs> the casuals that voted yeah, on this? Yeah, the casuals, yeah. I'm surprised they didn't vote re- re- Roman Reigns last. He's a great champion. You oh, know? yeah, he's good. Sure. Which one of these superstars is the worst SmackDown champion? Ooh. AJ Styles, The Miz, Becky Lynch, or Rhino and Heath Slater? That is so tough. Who wins? I, I can't vote. Rhino and Heath Slater, 36%. Oh, how much? 36. Okay, that's not a lot. Who came in second? And actually, this poll is old because it says The Miz, which was second. Oh. So. Interesting. I guess, I guess he's not in it anymore. Becky Lynch was third and Styles was last, mm. so that's good. Okay. <laughs> which one of these tag team champions is the best? The Revival, Heath Slater, and Rhino... The Young Bucks or Matt Hardy and Brother Nero? Oof. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I can't tell you. I don't even want to read the result for this one. Matt Hardy and Nero won. 40% for those two. Woo! The Revival was last. Ah. He Slater and Rhino were second. Okay. <laughs> Interesting poll. Um, what was your opinion of the triple threat match at No Mercy? Great, good, okay, or terrible? Mm, good. Great, 51%. Ooh, I mean, it was good, but I didn't like the placement of it. Uh, yeah, I, I, that did not make any sense to me. No. Uh, what was your opinion of the uh, tag team match between the Usos and Rhino and Slater? Mm, okay. Good, 43%. Ah, it was okay. Nah, here's your favorite one. What was your opinion of the Baron Corbin-Jack Swagger match? Great, good, okay, or terrible? I say terrible because he's facing Jack Swagger. That's the only reason why. <laughs> okay, one with 35, and then terrible was right behind a three. Yeah, well, because that's probably why. The people that put terrible are like, why the hell is he facing Jack Swagger? He's the fucking most useless guy in the world. <laughs> great at 10%. God, who who thought, thought that was great? <laughs> Those are the guys that started watching wrestling when, when Jack Swagger became world champion. And he shouldn't even, he didn't even deserve the title then. That was pathetic. That was back when Creative was smoking something. I don't even know what the hell was going on back then. <laughs> what was your opinion of the IC title match between The Miz and Ziggler? Great, good, okay, or terrible? Great. That was fantastic. 80% for great. Yeah, yeah it deserves a great. That Who was the insane. four people? And that should have been the main event. 4% said terrible. You guys are just. I don't Yo, know what you can you like. leave. There's the door. Like, literally, do you like Braun Strowman? Versus- Please let it hit your ass on the way out. I don't even want to read this tweet because it's going to fire me up, but what was oh, your God. opinion of the Alexa Bliss versus Naomi match? Great, good, okay, or terrible? That one was great, didn't it? Okay, 34%. How was that any whatsoever okay? No. I'm not even going to rant about it right now. <laughs> okay, next. I'm getting out of the no it mercy. Was okay, here we go. Should WWE release Paige after her second wellness violation? Yes or no? No. No, but 
slightly, 53%. 47 God. said yes. Yeah, it's, it's mixed. It's very mixed, and we'll get into that in the headlines. It's mixed. Are you intrigued by a potential Goldberg versus Lesnar match? Yes or no? Not really. Yes, 63%. Why? We already seen that happen. I'd rather him face someone else. Unless this match is going to be 100 times better because the match at WrestleMania 20 was literally the worst match in WWE history. Neither of them gave a shit at all. Like, like I know Goldberg wants, wants to show his son that he can wrestle. Yeah. So at least he'll be into it. Fucking Legend's like, no, I just want to suplex the whole match because that's my thing. Suplex City. <laughs> I just want to make money. I don't care. Yeah, I don't give a shit about anybody. Just bro- I give a shit about Brock Lesnar. Guys, I'm Brock Lesnar. Okay, we got two more left. I'll save the best for last. So oh, we'll God. go with the... Uh, which one of these programs was better this week, Raw or SmackDown? Mm-hmm. Raw. SmackDown, 76%. Jesus Christ. I'll give my reasons to why Raw's was better. We'll get into that. <laughs> I know why SmackDown was better. Because of one guy. And last poll. Should the Spirit Squad members, Kenny and Mikey, get full-time contracts on SmackDown? Yes no. or no? <laughs> no. Could yes win? No. 57% okay. said no, but if, yes was 43. Still, if you told me yes won by a landslide, I wouldn't like, what the fuck is wrong with you people? How is that Okay. <laughs> They're they're washed up has beens. They're like the fucking headbangers coming back. <laughs> it's useless. It's bad. It's poor TV ratings. It's piss garbage. It needs to get off the TV. At least Kenny know. and Mikey are in good shape. The headbangers. Sure, why not? Literally couldn't do anything. We <laughs> don't need the Spirit Squad. I think we need to see a Spirit Squad versus the Headbangers match. No, no, we don't. Maybe that can be on Superstars, where I don't want. <laughs> so we'll get into the reviews, guys. We'll start off. With Monday night jobbers. Yay. Oh wait, raw shit. I botched that one on purpose. Yeah. So we open again. Oh, for the third week in a row, we open with Ru- Rusev. It could. We should have opened with because he got overshadowed. We opened with the divas, the women, with Sasha Banks and Charlotte, and the biggest announcement ever in women's history yep. of the first Hell in the Cell match yep. with Sasha and Charlotte. But no, we're overshadowed by Rusev and Reigns again. For the third goddamn fucking week in a row, we get this shit. why Rusev came out in this what? with Lana. And then they talk, I don't know one gives a crap about your women's Oh, reputation. yeah, thanks, man. You just need more TV spotlight. Here, here, let me grab the spotlight, put it over here. Yeah, man, not care about the women yep, anymore. And then he goes, uh, <laughs> you guys main evented last week, but any match involving me is the main event. Oh, my lord. Okay, yeah, then, I'll admit that was good promo work, but that, that just stole everything yeah. away from that entire segment. And Lana ruined it, too. She's all like, uh, oh, you women need to know your place or something. I'm like, what? what the fuck? You were just wanting to be in the Ruins Revolution like three months ago. Where the hell was that gone Way to? to go. And then we have the biggest boo of the night, fucking Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns coming out. I'm like, oh, great. Yep, yep. This whole announcement is just thrown in the garbage now because this fucker's coming out. The U.S. title, cool, man. They got like, <laughs> to gotta ruin it with Reigns and Rusev again. Uh, they got to get in this thing. Yeah, and they, they start brawling with each other, and that just it ruins the entire opening segment of ROM. Like, uh, how do you come out and announce it and then just literally throw it in the garbage? Who the fuck thought of that? That's Vince right there. That's Vince shitting on the women's division once again. He can't be in charge anymore. He's losing it. Not even that. And then just shoving Roman Reigns down on yeah, the big thanks. announcement. For the third week in a row, we get this. If we start off with Reigns and Rusev again next week, I'm going to be so mad. <laughs> I think they're doing it on purpose to troll everybody. God. It's so bad. So we'll move on. So it, that leads into a tag match yeah. for, the, for later uh, on. We get Rusev and Charlotte who were like like going against each other in this segment too. Like Charlotte uh, was acting like a face in the segment for some reason. Yeah, I don't against, understand. Great. My girl's got to team up with fucking Roman yeah, Reigns. Yeah, you and Roman. Bay. <laughs> Her bay apparently. Great. There's a tweet that was uh, reposted from 2014 where it showed uh, Sasha back when she first started with NXT with Roman Reigns. He's wearing no shirt and she captioned it, me and Bay. <laughs> yeah, I remember her in an God. interview. She's like, I know, I think Roman Reigns is so hot and things like that. Whatever. Oh my so, lord. Great. Next. Anyway, so we'll move on. We get a, a bright, a bright light. Thank God, in a hilarious light, we get the new day coming out. Thank God, and they run another hilarious promo. New day, never dry. Will pro- will be the longest reigning champs. I'm telling you right now, they're gonna beat Demolition's record. These guys are just too good. It, it, it's like, you know they're too good when they can incorporate their tag titles into their promo and gimmick. Like they, 
the whole crowd does it with them and chants with them. These guys are so over. They're literally, I think, the most over tag team ever in WWE. I've never seen a tag team more over than these guys. Like, never, it's thought incredible. never say that two years ago. Yeah, when they were when they yeah. first when they first well when they first debuted that was garbage. I don't know what the hell was that, but <laughs> unbelievable. Um, Cesaro deserves so much better though. After this, um, we get the uh, the new day facing uh, Cesaro and Sheamus. I guess no, this is going to be was, a feud. It was Cesaro versus Kofi Kingston. Yeah, sorry, Cesaro versus Kofi Kingston. Yeah, fucking Sheamus. But I guess this up. looks like it's going to be a feud because yeah. it looks like Sheamus and Cesaro are going to team with each other and go for the tag team titles. But, but we get Kofi Kingston versus Cesaro. Yep, and the match ended up. It, it was ugh. the match ended up with Sheamus. First of all, he's on his phone doing yeah. like a Facebook. Yeah, he's live doing thing Facebook, which was wrong. Because I was trying to look for it on Facebook and I couldn't find anywhere. I went to Fa- I went to Sheamus's Facebook. I went to WWE's Facebook. I'm like, uh, hello, they're not live. There's nothing here. What the fuck is this bullshit? <laughs> they lied. to Way us. to promote lying shit. Yeah, it's like worse than Golden. Well, I mean, why do I even look for that? Why do I want to watch Sheamus on Facebook Live? Who the hell wants to watch Would that? You rather watch. Sheamus I watch me like you look like a fucking idiot. That's Would what you I would type watch in. Sheamus on Facebook Live in the ring or our truth playing Pokemon Go in the ring. None zero. <laughs> But like they do, they had that thing earlier, and I think they're this, they're doing the whole Miz and Sandow thing all over again, where Sheamus is on one turnbuckle and Cesaro is another, and Sheamus would do a pose, the crowd would boo, and Cesaro would do a pose, and the crowd would cheer, and they're doing it back and forth. Like I remember that as, this is exactly how it started between Sandow and Miz. I think this is exactly what they're doing again. Yep, and the match ended with Cesaro ended up he like kicked Big E or something or yeah. Xavier Woods, and then it caused a distraction on Cesaro. Roll up. A roll up. And Kofi King beats King Cesaro King. on a roll up. Great. Literally, yeah, Cesaro guess, deserves so much better. I know, but I guess it's showing the set like that they're Deception, still not a good yeah. tag team because he's Ce- Sheamus is doing more yeah. worse than good. So then, New Day is probably going to face Cesaro and Sheamus for the tag titles at Hell in a Cell, and I don't think they're going to win them. And New Day will go on to be the longest reigning tag team champions ever. I cannot believe that Cesaro and Sheamus are a tag team. It's it nuts. So mad. It's crazy. And a lot of, there's a lot of people out there on Twitter I read to that say like the New Day have to give up the titles are getting bland. I'm like, how are they getting bland? These guys come up with new shit on a, a Monday base, uh, like a, a daily basis on every Monday. They just come out and they have new material and they keep just getting better and better. They're so what, over like, with the crowd. Tell me a, a champion that didn't get bland after a year. Yeah, exactly. It's, 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 I'll wait. Yeah, I'll wait. Okay. I'll wait. Okay, we'll wait till then on the podcast here. No, nope, no, we're not waiting. But anyways, yeah, it's a new day. I think they're going to retain if they face them at Hell in the Cell. Cesaro and Sheamus will not win the titles. If they win the titles and end their deception, I'll be really pissed. So we'll go from there. Cesaro, <laughs> the Cesaro Buried Alive series continues. Yep. Moving on. Uh, as we said in the title of the show, Monday Night Jobbers, we got Bailey coming to the ring. And facing another jobber once again. Why does Bailey need to squash somebody? Why does she have to face a squash or a, a jobber and squash them? Why? What is the actual reasoning? She and faces this week Cammy Fields. It doesn't make sense for a face to have a squash match either. Doesn't like facing a heel jobber. Yeah, they're why? not heel jobbers. They're not even acting like heels. Uh, what is this? Kinda, I don't know, but why is she? Why isn't she facing Dana Brooke? Why isn't she feuding with her? Or where's Nia Jax? Or Nia where Jax? Is she? she just disappeared. She, she hasn't just, been on TV in like two weeks. She's like, oh shit! I feel bad for killing, uh, basically killing Alicia Fox. I don't know when the hell she's gonna come back, and now she's disappeared after. Why that. doesn't Bailey feud with like Summer Rae or something? Like I, I see people on Twitter actually like petitioning for Summer Rae's return. Like they actually like don't know where she is. This is ridiculous. So she faces this chick named Cami Fields this week, and she wins. Obviously, she squashed her. Why? What? Why? What? What purpose did this serve? I'm so mad that I honestly can't talk about this anymore. I'm, I'm to an, I'm to a point now where it's not even worth See, talking. This, I, I might just stop talking about jobber matches every week here on the podcast. To I King Scampoli's point, this is where it's been a bust because why do we need jobbers? Yeah. Why don't we just have enough people on the roster where we can have... We team? can have enough people on the roster. It just WWE chooses not to. Like, oh, the money's definitely where Jobbers is. No, it's not. Obviously, if you look at social media, people don't give a crap about Jobbers call except for... Another, call one up we'll another woman to. from NXT. Why not? Uh, I don't understand. I don't understand. We're going to move on. Then we get a Cruiserweight match. Yes. Okay. Something good we can talk about. 
We get Drew Gulak and Tony Nice versus uh, Lance Dorado and Sin Cara. So it looks like they're putting Sin Cara. joined the Cruiserweight division. Yeah, And I was somehow. telling you, I really, I think this is a great move for Sin Cara, to be honest. I think it'll make him relevant again. Hopefully, th- because now he's got a new theme as well. Yeah. So. I think he'll be good for the Cruiserweight division. He'll kind of, he'll, he'll give it a... Like a, a name that people have heard of. And I that hope people so. Know. He just needs to stop botching. That's a, if he can control his botching, then it will be fine. Yeah, um, he'll look good in this match. But a lot of good... Like, I mean, Lance Doral is probably going to be one of the headlines of the, the Cruiserway. I keep reading uh, good shit about this guy. And he's being really high, uh, touted through the, the Cruiserweight division. Drew Gulak as well. Unreal. Like one of the most crazy submission specialists I've ever seen. I'm not a fan of Tony Nese. Uh, Tony Nese, yeah, it's got... I think he's just... He's trying to play the heel too much. And it's, it's ruining his character. So we're not seeing a lot of toys. We're, we're seeing less than what he showed in the Cruiserweight Classic. That's for sure. So hopefully that might be he WWE improves. telling him to tone it down. Who knows? But. Yeah. So Dorado wins with a shooting star press. It literally was like <laughs> the guy just did the move like it was nothing. Like it was part of like the beginning of his move set. It wasn't a sing- like he did it like it as if it wasn't a signature he or did a it finisher. With ease. It was unbelievable. It's crazy, and he just does it and then that was it I'm like okay so that's his finisher i don't really remember that being his finisher in the cruiserweight classic though so i don't know either way sin cara and him picking up the victory yep. good so match. good for the cruiserweight division we'll move on to the mick foley and stephanie mcmahon segment with chris jericho and owens in the ring <laughs> foley suit my god the guy looked like don cherry like, i don't understand what the what? hell was that <laughs> He had his hair slicked back too, his beard done up nice. I'm like, what? Is this like supposed to be the corporate, corporate look? Foley? Like, what is this? He looks so bad. Oh, uh, I don't know. That was brutal. Uh, and uh So they we get interrupted by Jericho and Owens, and then uh, Foley I guess makes the list of Jericho. And so twice. Is Stephanie. Yeah, so is Stephanie. You're gonna be on a list. You're on again. <laughs> yeah, I think he put Foley on it twice. Yeah. <laughs> And like Owens, there's like that's not how you spell it. <laughs> I love Owens always because that's a quick jab. Like yo, that's not how you spell it. <laughs> yeah, or yeah, some kind of quick jab on Jericho all the time. Yeah, and so then Stephanie and uh, McFoley book it, Jericho against Rollins tonight and for the Stephanie main event. Adds to that. Yeah, and if Jericho wins, he gets to be added to the Hell in a Cell Whoa. match. And you see Owens' face is just like oh great. shit. <laughs> So that's interesting. We'll get into that later on when we talk about that match. Moving on. Curtis Axel. He's alive. Yes. He's been found. Oh, my God. So Bo Dallas and Curtis Axel face Enzo and Cass. This is Curtis Axel's first match on TV since July. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is, is that, the first time he's been confirmed? on TV since July. This is confirmed. July 25th was his last match. Okay. Um. The match doesn't even happen, though. The club comes out and start ki- kicking Enzo and Cass's ass. Looks like they're they're few- going to be feuding with them, too. Um, I guess this is the club trying to make a statement, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. And, so I guess the club is now not going to be feuding with New Day anymore. Yeah. So they're going to be feuding with Enzo and Cass. I guess this is yeah. a way to stay relevant because yep. it looks like everybody doesn't know what the fuck to do with these guys. And then we come back from commercial, and Bo Dallas and Curtis Axler are still in the ring. Yeah. Oh, my God. And they're like, they demand a match. And then out comes Sami Zayn and Neville. Holy shit, Neville's alive too. Oh my <laughs> lord. All these guys are coming up. Like we, we talk about how Raw is so long. And oh, we have no roster space. We got to put more jobbers. No, you don't. You got guys like Neville and Curtis Axel apparently. That could fill those gaps. But I guess not. <laughs> we still got to have jobbers. Um, so out comes Sami Zayn with Neville. Uh, <laughs> God. Uh, I don't know. I just. I like the tag team of Sami Zayn and Neville, though. They, they look really good together. But I thought Neville would be in the cruiserweight division and be at least battling for the head of that division, but maybe not now. No, oh, and then, yeah, Sami Zayn, who should be in a mid-card feud at some point already, yeah. and is uh, not. And he's, he's Curtis Axel and Bo Dallas. Yeah, and Bo Dallas doesn't even help his partner. He just watches Axel get beaten, gets the haluva kick in the red arrow, and he's just watching him, not doing nice, <laughs> jumping in the ring and helping his partner out. Bo Dallas' new attitude. Yeah, and that's it. And Curtis Axel loses. Being on the first time on TV is July. Uh, <laughs> Poor Curtis Axel. Yeah, so I don't know what they're going to go with Bo Dallas and Curtis Axel from here. Is Axel going to be on TV more now? Is he going to come next week and say, yo, why didn't you help me out there? Are these guys going to fuse? Is this a face turn for Axel? <laughs> like, Maybe. what's happening here? 
they're, are they going to keep Zayn and Neville together? If they do, I, those these guys look like an unreal tag team. They'd be really good. If they keep these guys together, I'd yeah. be like, fuck yeah. Two former NXT champions <laughs> of the tag team. God, there's three in that ring, that match. Bo Dallas, former NXT champion. That's bad. God. So move on. We had a backstage segment with the Cruiserweights, speaking of Cruiserweights, with TJ Perkins and Brian Kendrick. There's some deception going on. TJ confronted uh, Brian Kendrick about uh, his cheap, being cheap lately and being cheap in his uh, match at uh, uh, Backlash, or not Backlash, Clash Champions. Um, he's asking Brian Kendrick to be the Brian Kendrick and the guy that he remembers. Um, he tries to go for a handshake and then tries to cheap shot TJ, and then TJ actually gets blocks it and then shoves uh, Brian Kendrick to the ground. So mm, it looks like uh, this feud is going to continue between the Brian Kendrick and TJ Perkins. Um, I guess I'm okay with that, uh, even though I, there's it's, a lot of cruiserweights out there know, in his division it, now. But it's the old, credible guy putting over the new guy. Yeah. Um, man, TJ Perkins is unreal. His entrance alone just makes him that much more credible. <laughs> Mega um, man. Moving on, to, we'll get into the match we were going to, t- we were going to talk about earlier. We're going to talk about it now. Charlotte and Rusev versus Roman and Sasha Banks. What a stupid Tag match. team match of the year. Oh, my God. It, it was a good match, though. As I much didn't as, want uh, to cheer for Roman Reigns. <laughs> as much as it was the a, whole match yeah. that Roman Reigns is in the ring, all you hear is, we want Sasha. Sasha. Yeah, because Roman Reigns sucks. The crowd you know what's like bad it. when they have to have Sasha carry Roman Reigns through a match yeah. to get him cheered? But I guess they guys tag together just to boost both feuds, force uh, Great. Hell in the Cell. And, you know, um, the but chance. one thing good out of this match, your girl made Sasha or your girl Sasha made Charlotte tap again. Yeah, but not after Roman Reigns speared Rusev while the match while the move yeah. was going on. Yeah, just uh, you gotta gotta you gotta have that <laughs> be the centerpiece for the tap out. You can't have Sasha just pinch or make Charlotte tap. No, nope, you gotta simply. have Roman Reigns spear yep. Rusev. Because like, what was well, Rusev gonna do? She wasn't gonna go there and kick <laughs> kick Sasha Banks. That's not allowed. You're not going to see that on WWE TV. So why the hell did he come out? And, like, that's what I mean. They're trying to, to center the attention on Roman Reigns and Rusev rather than the woman. It's so yeah, bad. It, yeah, in a, in a small way, they did that. <sighs> he really looked in-depth to that. So, yeah, she makes her tap out. That was great. That's like the third time now. Yep. I don't think Charlotte should even get another title shot. Yeah, Bailey. <laughs> Bailey's been squashing people. She deserves it. She's been being, she's yeah. been being jobbers. That deserves title shot right away. Yeah. Oh yeah! After the we forgot to talk about after the Bailey match, she went on the she did was the she was on the stage with the inflatable arm dude. Yeah, and, and Dana, Dana Brooke, Brooke came by and behind. attacked her. Whatever. Dana yeah. Brooke, playtime is over. Yeah, playtime is over. So yeah, uh, I guess okay match. Yeah, good for Roman Reigns. Finally yeah, I guess a, a feud booster for their Hell in the Cell match. Uh, yeah, which one? Both. <laughs> oh wait, sorry, Rusev and Roman because the other one apparently doesn't matter. Yep. According to their their opening segment. We'll move on. Paul Heyman segment comes to the ring and is here to address the Goldberg and 2K17 situation. Uh, he comes out, uh, talks about uh, Goldberg versus Brock. He shows a video of Goldberg versus Brock in 2K17 and what the result would be. Uh, he starts boosting up Goldberg, um, then proceeds to call Goldberg out by saying Brock challenges him to a fight. Ooh. So we get the the first challenge, and later on Twitter, Goldberg tweets saying he will be on Raw next week. Ooh, yeah, mm-hmm. they show hit they show the Goldberg clip on Jonathan Coachman's interview. Yeah, but so how he, he wanted to he'd face want to Lesner. face uh, Lesnar yeah. again because that ma- other match was he horrible. Said that, he said that Lesnar deserves a rematch. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right, thanks Goldberg. But what a good promo by Paul Heyman, guys! Just absolute boss at promos. It's insane. He's, yeah, he's so good at being the hype man. Yeah, for Lesnar because so, Lesnar can't talk over his shit. So uh, Goldberg's gonna be on Raw next week. It's gonna be interesting to see if he's yeah. gonna be there. But see, I, I, we don't like this because I don't know. It, it it takes away from the. Like surprise factor of Goldberg yeah. coming back, but then again, then again, it also gives them a chance for people to be like, "Oh, Goldberg's coming back this week." Okay, I'm going to yeah. tune in. See, yeah, you can see it two ways. One way, okay, you can see it as like it could have made a surprise factor. It could have been like, okay, bring Paul Heyman and Brock Lesnar to the ring, saying like they've dominated everyone on the roster. You know, kind of like that thing, like who there's no one left, and then have Goldberg come out as a surprise factor. Or they could have gone the way they did now. They're trying to get all the people that remembered it used to watch WWE back then and loved Goldberg. They're trying to get them to come back and watch it. And now that everyone knows Goldberg's going to be on Raw next week, everyone's going to tune in for it. And that's just going to boost the TV ratings. It's all about the ratings for that. 
So this is, you can have anyone wrestling. They just want the ratings. Yep. So Paul looks like it's going to be Goldberg versus Brock Lesnar at Survivor Series. Uh, wow. Interesting. So move on. TJ Perkins actually has a match versus Araya Davari, the brother of uh, – what was his first name? The Davari was in WWE. Is it Cosro Davari? Can't remember his first name. No. He was, uh, guess is his brother. We had Brian Kendrick on commentary. It was a really good match. Davari actually looked pretty good. So if he's going to be sticking around in the Cruiser division, I'm glad he is because he's a really good talent. TJ wins with a submission with his uh, – it's almost like a cat uh, – a leg submission. It's almost like the calf crusher that AJ Styles does, but it looks pretty good. The way he does it, the transitions into it is really cool. But yeah, TJ Perkins looking good on top and has a stare down with Brian Kendrick. So it looks like they're probably going to have a rematch at Hell in a Cell. Yeah. I think it's actually official. They're having a, a Cruiserweight title match. Um, Would that be in the cell? <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to be in Hell in a Cell. Why not? You got to have every, it's a gimmick pay per view. Perkins going to climb up to the top of the cell. <laughs> oh, God. We'll move on, and again, the, the, the continuing topic of Monday Night Jobbers, Braun Strowman. Hang on. Raw! Unbelievable. Okay, we thought he was going to have some competition this week. Nope. Wrong. Wrong. Yeah, he got two jobbers He this got week. two instead of one, because two is always better than one. Yeah. He gets the Splash Brothers, Steve, or Steven and Clay. These guys look so stupid. They look Is like this the, to be the Clay Thompson and Steph Curry. I literally think that's what it was supposed to be. They look like really bad creator wrestlers out of 2K. Like if you went on there and some four year old made a creator wrestler, this is what these guys look like. Braun Strowman just kicked their ass in like 30 seconds. Literally a quick squash match. What else is new? Both what else is new? Time. Cool, man. So what like, next week he's gonna get three? They get three. Four? Is this goal is this freaking Ryback all over again? We what the fuck is this? People? Again, we don't need jobbers. We don't. We, okay, we get it, WWE. Braun Strowman's a monster. He's a freak. Yeah, we, we honestly get it. It's overdone now. And now he goes on the mic. It's the same exact thing as last week. That's what's even worse about this. Last week, he's like, if I don't get my competition this week, which he meant like when he said that last week, then there will be, you know, everyone's going to be in trouble. There won't be a Raw. Well, guess what? There was a Raw this week. And look what you just said. You said the same thing about last week, this week, what's going to happen yeah. next week. So I'm calling your bluff here, Braun Strowman. I don't think you're going to do jack shit. You're going to do jack shit. You're going to fed three more jobbers, and you're going to pin them all at the same time. Cool, man. Like, great. I this- just really hope they don't give them, like, Sami Zayn and Neville to get squashed by Braun Strowman next week. Ugh, I'm just – like this guy needs a feud. I want to get behind it, but I can't because he doesn't have a Honestly, feud. Honestly, as much as we don't want to see it, a good first and first feud would be Big Show because yeah. at least that would like show that he is a dominant. Yeah. Giant. Apparently, Big Show is injured. I read, and he's not going to be back until j- around January time, where he's know. going to promote his match with Shaquille O'Neal at next year's WrestleMania. How the fuck did he get injured? What did he do? By training or something like he he missed a step and he fell down, and the whole world had an earthquake, and we all wonder what the <laughs> hell that was. That was Big Show falling down. So Braun Strowman needs a feud, and if we don't see one next week, you should just go to SmackDown. Yeah, I might even just stop talking about it. Again, if we're gonna, if we continue with the jobbers that don't mean anything, then I'm not gonna talk about it on this show. As much as people want to hear my reaction, I, I get the same. I give you, I'm giving you guys the same reaction every week. I don't like it. I hate it. There's just so much I can rant about it, and I've already done it like a hundred times. Isn't there? Yeah. So I, I thought we were missing a crappy segment before the main event. I don't know. It probably had something to do with Golden Truth. No, it was. Yeah, it was Titus O'Neil. Yeah, I don't want to talk R-Truth. about that. I don't want to talk about that. And R- <laughs> if you want to talk about it, go ahead. I'm going to give you the mic. Our Truth won with a roll up. That's what happened. Oh wow, that's so exciting! I'm glad I didn't. I'm glad I tuned into Raw for that. Yep. And then Titus O'Neil has his uh, classic pr- press conference after the match again. Oh, great. Like, what is with this who's press conference gimmick crap? I don't know. I don't know. But I don't know. Titus I wanna... O'Neil just keeps going down and down in my books, man. He's he's. I don't even care about him anymore. Yeah, it's fantastic. It's sad. So we get the main event: Chris Jericho versus Seth Rollins. And it was announced earlier. If you remember, if Jericho wins, he gets put in the title match at Hell in the Cell. Really good match, I thought. Really, really good match. Uh, Jericho, even at his age, can put up an exceptional match. Oh yeah, um, he's still one of the best talents they have. Seth ends up winning by roll-up after countering the walls of Jericho. So, 
I thought for sure Kevin Owens was going to try to screw him. But Kevin Owens gets in the ring after the win. And right after. Like, right, literally, literally right like, after. He doesn't even have like one second to celebrate. No one's yeah. in the ring. Just kicks him, him, starts beating the shit out of him, then gets thrown out of the ring. And then Jericho starts to try to beat up Seth Rollins, counters into the pedigree while Owens is just watching from the ramp and watching Great his best, friend, best friend get hurt. Just every week Owens continues to just let Jericho get his ass kicked. Unreal. <laughs> so interesting. So Jericho's not in the title, so it's going to be one or in title matches, one on one. Could it interfere? I have a cell, even though it's in the cell. They could break the cell, or he can crash entering the door. He could be hiding under the ring. He could he could accidentally screw over Owens, which leads to a deception and a feud between yep, them. Yeah, but I don't know. I, I still love Jericho. They're such they're such a good heel like team. I guess you can call them hmm. or friends. I don't know. This <laughs> they're just they're so good. They're yep. just both jerks. They don't care about anyone else. They don't even care about each other, but they nope. make it seem like they do. <laughs> I think they're going to split up soon. It's going to happen, and, and by the time it happens... But I want them both uh, to be healed. I don't want Jericho to go back to a face again. No, he, it doesn't work as a face. It sucks. So I don't know if they actually will split up. But something's going to happen. I don't know. So I guess it was an okay end to the show. Yeah. Oh, just just okay. I mean, it was better than Roman Reigns and Rusev being a main event. Oh, God. I, I still can't believe that opened the show. Yeah, well, I mean, it didn't beat last week's main event of the the women's title match, but yeah. I mean, nothing's going to beat that, in my opinion. So move on. I think uh, I'll give the raw score. Raw score this week, I give it a let me give it a seven out of ten this week. I'm gonna corporately agree with you and say seven. S- seven. Yeah. It's a fair score for this week. So we'll move on to the SmackDown review. Some interesting interesting rants to come for the SmackDown review. So tune in and stay tuned, guys. Yeah. As we get into the Tuesday night rant, it should be called. <laughs> Mine's not even a rant from Tuesday, really. Yeah. It's just a rant from Sunday. But we'll get into that. So we'll open a show. Ziggler opens the show on SmackDown. Uh, can we briefly talk about, because we, we're not doing a No Mercy review. Yeah, we didn't. Can we talk about how good that match was? That match should have been the main event, and it was The wasn't. way that they structured that card it was it terrible. Was literally, like they just randomized it. Like literally, they put it in WWE oh Universe God. mode and just randomized the. They just card. randomized it. Okay, that looks good. Throw it up on the board. We'll just send an email to everybody yeah. saying the main event is the title match, and that's good to go. No, no. no. We have the we had the WWE Triple Threat match for the WWE title first, and then we had the Miz versus Ziggler in the middle of the card, and then the main event was Wyatt versus Orton, which was oh the biggest. Oh my God! Snooze literally, match. what the hell happened there? Did they literally, did someone drunk backstage set up the card? They went up on the board and went, oh, this one was good here. This one was good here. Oh, that looks great. Let's go. Send that it. That Ziggler versus Miz match was the best match they've ever had together. Yeah, that was great. And what? Because they didn't want the Intercontinental title being the main event? Who gives a fuck? That elevates the Intercontinental title. Exactly. It makes it look better. Exactly. I, I, the the they, way that uh, the whole event was structured made it awful. If they made it, if they structured it the right way, it would have been an awesome pay per view. Everyone was so hype after that Ziggler Miz match. Like, yeah. how can you? You can't. You do gave us the snooze that. fest of that main event. The that Orton garbage main event. Wyatt match was so boring. Like, literally, my dad watched it with me, and he and he doesn't <laughs> watch wrestling at all. And, and he, he said, thought it was bad. And he's like, "Why wasn't that Miz vs Ziggler guy the main event?" God. I was like, "I don't." So you know, know, guys, listen to that. You heard that right. His dad can't even be known as a casual fan. His dad, who doesn't watch wrestling, said that the, Z- the Ziggler Miz should have been the main event. Yeah, you mm-hmm. heard that right, ladies and gentlemen. That's that's bad. Don't be creative. You should be ashamed. So, so Ziggler opens the show. He talks about his title win, obviously. Then we get Miz and Maurice coming out looking all dressed in black. Looks like they're about to attend a funeral. Yeah, they're, I guess they, they're funeraling the IC championship being on yeah, Ziggler. They're, they're mourning the... <laughs> The death of the Intercontinental Championship. God. Unreal. Miz says he ain't done with Ziggler, and neither are they. And points, and out comes a Spirit Squad. Yay! Something we need on TV. Kenny and Mickey. Great. And this leads to a two-on-one handicap match. Fantastic. All right. Ziggler wins. He beats down. He's starting to beat down, uh, or gets beaten down by the squad and Miz. And then Rhino and Slater come out for the save. All right. So we getting a Rhino and Slater and uh, Spirit Squad feud? Uh, 
I hope not. I hope this is the last we saw of the Spirit Squad for a while. Please, we don't need him on TV. They're exactly like I said before. They're like the headbangers. Okay, show up one week and then go away. We don't need you anymore. Yeah, like SmackDown's I, two hours long. You're gonna take up time. Like I'm marked out when they came out the first time, but now yeah. it's just like okay, they came out at No Mercy and now they came out on SmackDown. Okay, it's yeah. done. It's done. Get out of here. Um, so they came out for the save. So after that, it was announced that Becky Lynch will face Alexa Bliss for the women's title on November eighth in Scotland. When Becky is all healed from her injury, and I guess her injury is non wrestling related. What? Did she take some drugs? I don't know. No, she would have been suspended. <laughs> Maybe they're uh, hiding it. Yeah, it could be. Like Brock Lesnar is Becky in the same category as Brock Lesnar? <laughs> I don't think so. So we move on to a big, big, big announcement. Uh, Shane and Daniel Bryan issue a Survivor Series challenge to Monday Night Raw. They challenge their top five superstars against SmackDown's top five Male. superstars. Male superstars. Male superstars. Top five tag team superstars from Raw against top five tag team from SmackDown. And the top five women from Raw against the top five women from SmackDown. The first time everybody. ever there will be a Survivor Series traditional tag team match with the women. I love that they're just breaking the barriers with the women, man. The new matches just keep coming. I love it. Yeah, interesting. I think that'll be. It'll literally be both rosters yeah. of the men. So now the Survivor Series is slowly becoming what it used to be. Now I love it. I love they're doing that. So there's going to be more than one traditional uh, Survivor Series elimination match. It is about there's going to be three of them. The thank fucking Christ. tag team match is going to have twenty guys in the ring. God, that's going to be a big match. <laughs> like, where are they going to stand? <laughs> they're going to have to give them like extra chairs, or they're going to have to st- stand on the steel steps and take turns <laughs> being on the apron. They'll literally be around the entire. Yeah, ring. they'll have to use the other turnbuckle that never gets used for tagging. It's literally what's going to have to happen. <laughs> it's crazy. They'll almost be joining at both sides together. <laughs> uh, so it's going to be interesting to see who of the top five. Who? 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 Uh, and we'll get into that. You know what? We'll do a Survivor Series prediction. That's yeah. when we'll give our predictions. Yeah, we'll do a yeah, we'll do a prediction for that. So we'll move on, and uh, this is going to be, I guess, rant number one of the show for SmackDown. We had Carmella versus Naomi. <laughs> oh my god! So before we talk about that, let's get your rant out. And I think it's it has to do with No Mercy. Not and even. <sighs> it was announced at No Mercy that Becky was unable to compete for the Women's Championship due to injury. So they scrapped it, and we got something in its place. Okay. You have Alexa Bliss as a number one contender. You want to make her relevant to face Becky Lynch. So what do you do? You put her in a match with Naomi. Okay. Fine. Naomi's a credible woman. Okay. Yeah. She can win that match. It'll make her look good. What happens? No! She fucking loses on a roll-up to Naomi! <laughs> a roll-up! How do you make the number one contender lose a match on a pay-per-view to someone that isn't even involved or isn't even relevant in the title picture? It made zero sense. Oh, my God. I agree with you. What? Naomi? Really? Her? Like, I like Naomi, okay? I really do. I vote for this girl all the time, but she should not be beating Alexa if Alexa's the number one contender for yeah. Becky's title. I know. What that. does Naomi have to do with this feud? What? Zero. What does she have to bring to this? Nothing. You're making Alexa look worse now. She just yeah, went from, like, up here to, like, down here by view. losing. You could have made her look good, have, have her beat Naomi with a twisted bliss, have her look strong going into that match in November. But no, you have her lose to Naomi, and now... Daniel Bryan comes out this week and says, oh, guess what? You're going to face Naomi next week. Oh, so we got to have that match again. Yeah. <laughs> in which I'm sure if Naomi wins this match, she'll probably be put in the title picture now. Great. Even before Alexa even had a match. It's just, she got fucked over that night, man. She went from having a title shot to not even facing Becky. She, Becky should have forfeited the title. That's my opinion. And then you have her lose to Naomi. Yeah. Why? You know, I do think Becky should have forfeited the title for a month and then had a chance to win it back. Is that's it's, it's wrong? Now you're keeping the champion out for a month. You're not going to be on TV to wrestle or anything. That would have been even worse if Naomi yeah, would have won. If they're the going to have back. Alexa lose, though, as much as you don't like to hear, it, it should have been Nikki Bella because they want Nikki Bella is supposed to be the ne- like one of the top women on on SmackDown. You should have had her come out, that. or or if it should have been Nikki, but have Bliss win by Carmella distracting Nikki. And continuing that feud, but still having Alexa Bliss win and crediting herself as the number one contender. She literally is the number one contender losing to Naomi, who has no yeah. relevance whatsoever in the title picture right now. Yeah. It, it was retarded. And I then, didn't like it at all. Going into SmackDown, she has a match with Carmella 
and wins yeah. that match. Yeah, she beats she beats Carmella, but this is due to Nikki because before the match, there's a video showing that Carmella beating up Nikki Bella backstage. Um, and uh, even when Carmella attacking Naomi before the match, Naomi still ends up winning against Carmella. So she beats your girl, but then she beats my girl the very the very first SmackDown after. Why, Why is Naomi getting all these wins? Is it because Natty's gone? Like, what the hell? I don't understand why Naomi's all of a sudden getting all these wins. Yeah, it's because Nikki Bella came out and distracted, and she starts, she chased Carmella away, and, and Naomi and Nikki Bella look strong. Cool. So, <laughs> Did Naomi win with a roll-up, too? I didn't even I know SmackDown's the land of opportunity, and you, got, you want to give people some shots. But right now, it is not her chance to get the shot. You step aside and let Alexa Bliss, who's the number one contender, get her shot. And you step aside and you let Carmella and Nikki face each other. You do not beat Carmella. I know because Nikki interfered. She literally just just buried the two new girls. So bad. In less than two days. Yeah. Terrible. What, what terrible, that terrible booking by WWE. Awful. God awful. Awful. One of the worst matches I've seen on pay-per-view. Yeah. I was very blissed off from that match. <laughs> very blissed off. <laughs> Next. Move on. Jimmy Uso versus Chad Gable. So we had the opposite last week. It was Jay versus Jason Jordan. Yeah. Now we got Jimmy Uso versus Chad Gable. Okay. So the match went pretty good. Although uh, Jay Uso helping his brother win with the pin. Great. He like held him. Oh, so down. we got fucking Uso's burying American Alpha. One of the greatest tag teams going now. Oh, but like I said last week, they should be winning this match though. Yeah. Because they're going to face Rhino and Slater. Yeah. They don't need to be brought down. So then that I think this is this is just uh building up the feud that's after the Usos beating yeah. Slater and Rhino for the titles. Um, it's gonna be Alpha versus Usos at some point. Yeah, and as, as we get to the one tweet that said there are there are literally uh no empty spot. I don't know who said it. Um but all the tag teams are being used except for one we don't know where they are. Uh, Brazongo. Brazongo. But after this match, the hype bros were backstage. And then the Ascension awkwardly came in and just stared at them and walked away. So it looks like the Hype Bros are feuding with the Ascension. And the Vaude so Villains are nowhere to be seen. The Vaude Villains are no shows. Why aren't they feuding with Van- <laughs> like Brazongo? Brazongo could be the face and you know, the Vaude Villains the heels. That'd be a good tag team feud as well. I don't understand that. But it makes sense that they're having them lose in single. Like they had Chad Gable lose in a singles match because it's still doesn't give off a, a vibe that American Alpha as a tag team is worse yeah. than the Usos. You know yeah. what I mean? It's still saying, like, okay, they may have beat him one-on-one, but they won't beat him in a tag match. Yeah. And it makes sense to make the number one contenders look strong and have momentum going into yeah. a title match. Unlike Not the Alexa division. Bliss. Face Naomi. Naomi. Oh, feel the glow. <laughs> who's literally, like, the bottom you of know, the we're barrel. Feeling, we're feeling the right shit now. end of the stick because that was crap. So uh, good on WWE for you know this part at least, yeah. Or at least have <laughs> yeah. You screwed up on the women's part. You, go over. You botched it. hardcore. You sin car botched the women's division there. Oh, so I, in a in a way, I like that. Okay, I I kind of see it. <sighs> so now you're done running up with that. We get into my rant. Oh we my get this God. part of the show. <laughs> now I have to take a but sip we, of water. We here. have different opinions on this. So we get AJ Styles in the ring. Okay, talks about his title win. Still talking about he's a champ that runs the camp. I 100% agree. And tries to reveal his next opponent, but then out comes Dean Ambrose. Um, Styles looking pretty pissed off. And then uh, AJ Styles reveals his real opponent, James Ellsworth. He comes out with no entrance theme, and he gets a bigger pop than Roman Reigns. I am literally scratching my head right now. If you don't know, because you can't see. So Ellsworth has had three spots on TV. Two since he got squashed by Braun Strowman. Both. Okay, I understand that this guy is from the Indies, and he's been the Indies for a long time. He's Everyone's very, like, "Oh, he's great. He's getting his shot now." But no, serious. the fact that they put this fucking goon in a title match next week is pathetic. <laughs> what about- Not only did you have him beat AJ Styles this week. You beat the guy that only the only wrestler ever to hold all three championships in all three major brands lose to this fuck. <laughs> but that is on his record now that his loss, he beat AJ Styles. That makes no sense. After he got squashed in 20 seconds, the Browns. Yeah, Dean Ambrose him. helped him, but that's bullshit. Dean so Ambrose, he- you're missing the big part of this. Dean Ambrose was a special guest referee in this match. Yeah, and yeah. And he completely fucked over AJ Styles at least Yeah, he gave him the dirty deeds twice. Once Styles kicked out of it. Not even that. Like, Ellsworth was tapping to the calf crusher, and Dean yeah. Ambrose was calling on the phone. Yeah. So it's not like... AJ not Styles got win. screwed. It's not a clean win. It's not like... It's garbage. crazy, but... 
I understand why they did it because they want to have the Ambrose Styles feud look really good. How do you make it look good by putting Ellsworth in the title match next week? That, that doesn't make any why. sense. Okay. This week, I could see it. I don't understand why they're giving him a title shot next week. How does making this guy have a title shot make any sense whatsoever? How does guys like Apollo Crews, who's been off TV for a couple weeks, where the hell did Apollo Crews go? Baron Corbin, who's being made to face Jack Swagger, the most irrelevant feud of the century. How did guys like these two get passed up for title opportunities? Baron Corbin beat Dean Ambrose. When he had the title and got nothing after that, he got made to face Jack Swagger. How is that a gift for being the champion? The gift of Jericho. Jericho. Unbelievable. I can't believe Elders is getting a title match this week. I don't, there's a lot of people that agree with it. I'm, I'm, I'm disagreeing with it because Ellsworth does not deserve. Okay, whatever. I can semi agree with you what you're saying now about this week, and it kind of makes sense towards the, the fact Ambrose that they're making it and Styles carry over to the next week doesn't make sense. It's garbage. You cannot, as much as this guy has got, is, is getting a shot now in the Indies. You guys are missing the extreme giant picture here that SmackDown is called the land of opportunity for people that deserve it. Ellsworth does not deserve not even a, a championship match after winning one match that he shouldn't have won. He's not even an active wrestler. He's, He's not, not contracted. <laughs> How does a non-contract wrestler get a title match over guys like Cruz or guys like Corbin? I know Ziggler has a title now, but Ziggler, Miz, guys like this, who deserve the championship title match? Doesn't make any sense. I'm so pissed that Ellsworth is getting a title match next week. Yeah, it, it, was, is it was garbage. announced on Talking Smack. That brought... Oh, okay, that literally brought my rating down two for SmackDown this week because of that. Because they ana- cause they announced the title match next week. That is the only reason why. The, I could have seen like if they said, "Okay, you're gonna like have a match to earn a contract or something," but not like a title match. Unreal. You He's getting I mean? a world heavy, and if he wins the title, <laughs> can you imagine if the James backlash? Ellsworth? I'm telling you guys right now, and I'm with Michael Chow on here. If James Ellsworth wins the title next week, I will boycott SmackDown. It's going to be it's just not, like the old days, and I'll just watch the pay-per-views. It's not happening. Let's be realistic here. If they did it, they would bury their own brand by having a, a local jobber win their title. I would be so mad. It would make this is not sense. Santino Morella all over again, guys. This is not David Arquette winning the WCW championship. We saw how that went. That was garbage. WCW went in the hole after that. They would, they would bury their own brand if they did this. Unbelievable. If he, gets a, if he wins but, the title, uh, our show next week might be... All about that and me ranting for like an hour. But I could understand if they had him face Styles again next week for a contract or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. That would have made sense and then Styles beat him and then we never see him again. Yeah. But like the fact that they're giving him a title match, it made no sense at all. Like, I, don't I understand know that they you know wanted what? they want it to be the land of opportunity and they yeah. want like things that wouldn't have this would never happen on Raw, by the way. Yeah. So they want stuff to happen that would never happen on Raw, but I think this is a little too extreme. Yeah, I think this you guys is a little much. just went over the edge. Yeah. <laughs> so Ladies and gentlemen, I know what your opinions are on Ellsworth getting the win and stuff this week. I want to know your honest opinions. Don't goon me and give me an answer like, oh my god, he deserves the title, man. Like, he, this is good TV. This is funny. No, don't give me that shit. He deserves an action figure. Give me your honest reaction, guys. I want to know your honest opinion on if James Ellsworth deserves the title match next week. Let us know. Tweet at us. Leave it in a comment. Let us know. Because it does not make sense. Yeah, it does not make sense. So move on to the main event. <laughs> and it wasn't really even a main event match. It was more like a main event segment. We were supposed to have Luke Harper and Bray Wyatt versus Kane and Randy Orton. We had Bray Wyatt and Luke Harper come out and cut a good promos. Luke Harper, unreal on the mic, by the way. That was a really good promo he cut this week. Luke Harper's um, the best of, of the Wyatt family going. Oh, for so. sure. For sure. And now that the Eric Rowan, the useless trash, is injured, we don't see him for a while. It's good that Luke Harper's going to get more TV time. Um, Orton and Kane come out, but before the match can even start, the lights go out and the lights come back on and Kane's gone. Disappeared. Poof. He's gone. Luke Harper's in his place. And he's like trying to tag Randy Orton. He's laughing at him. Randy Orton turns around to his sister Abigail, and that's how the show ends. Actually, with... the match had started because then I thought the bell didn't oh, ring because Wyatt pinned Orton after that. Oh, that's right, that's right. What am I talking about? Yeah. So it was during the match, but yeah. still, it's the exact way that you said it happened. And so. that's how we end the show. Yeah. So Bray Wyatt finally gets a win. So he gets a win at the pay per view, <laughs> and he gets a win on SmackDown. Yes, getting that percentage back up, baby, or back down, I should say. Yeah, and that win percentage yeah. back up. Oh man, thank so, God, yeah, thank Bray God. Wyatt and Luke Harper looking strong. Yeah, like it. 
So, so I think that feud is going to continue now. We'll see what happens. Um, Bray Wyatt and Orton, man. I don't know. You, you, I thought that it was going to be the ending feud at, yeah. at uh, No Mercy. Well, they don't but. even have another pay-per-view until Survivor Series. So. That's crazy. Maybe they'll have. I don't know. I can't say. Hopefully something happens. Yeah, that because they're going to have the, the three matches that are the ta- – uh, excuse yeah. me. The Survivor Series type matches. <laughs> I don't. I, I doubt Luke Harper and Bray Wyatt are even in that. So exactly. So they'll probably have like a Radio Orton one handicap. Kane. Maybe Kane will come back. Who knows? Maybe Reno has to go into the Wyatt world again, aka back backstage locker room with with the lights off. Or we get welcome to Viperville. <laughs> oh God! No! 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 Not happening. That's SmackDown. I give it a review, a, a rating. It was up there with, with Raw, but I give it a rating of five this week. Because of Elver getting, because of the announcement of Elver getting a title match, it brought it down to. I'm gonna say, you know, sorry, five point five. I'll give it some benefit of the doubt there. Five point five. Raw won this week for me clearly. Raw won for me, but it was close. I'd say I'd say SmackDown got a six to six and a half. Okay, but like I said, SmackDown gets a pass because it's always yeah. consistent. You know what? I can agree with the pass too because they've been so good lately, that, and Raw needed something to win and get people to start watching Raw again. And this is a good way to do Raw it. Raw is just too sporadic all over the fucking place. Oh, for SmackDown sure. SmackDown is is consistently okay to good every yeah. week. Yeah. So I can handle that. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, Raw win for me, Raw win for you. But again, we give the pass to SmackDown. That's it for the Raw and SmackDown review, guys. Let's get into our last part of the show: the WWE headlines. That's it. Welcome, guys, to WWE Headlines, the part of the show where we talk about any important news in the WWE. We got a few topics here today. So we'll get into number one. Brock Lesnar's Raw Return announced. He'll be coming back to the Target Center in Minneapolis, Minnesota on Monday Night Raw on October 24th. He'll make his return for that night show. Lesnar is being billed from the city despite being born in South Dakota and being a Canadian resident. So, okay. So, so basically it's going to be like a homecoming for Brock Lesnar and we're going to get more into the Goldberg versus Brock Lesnar feud. So Goldberg next week, Lesnar the week after. Is this the only time we're going to see him? I hope not. <laughs> probably. Survivor what am I talking series? about? That's probably the only time we're going to see him till Survivor Series. Whatever. Um, Part-timers again, get to do whatever the fuck they is want. Is this going to be the main event of Survivor Series? I want to say no, but I, I won't be. be surprised if it is. Plain and simple. <laughs> Moving on to some uh, sort of related WWE news. Da- uh, Dana White has announced Ronda Rousey's returning fight to the UFC. Girl is obsessed with wrestling and one day will probably become a diva. I really don't care about her as an MMA performer, but I want to see that Triple H and Stephanie yeah. versus Ronda and Rock match. That, the tease yeah. that we saw a couple years ago. I hope we said it. It could happen at 33 next year. I'm sure Rock can find some time. Um <laughs> Yep, she'll be returning for her fight on December 30th in Las Vegas against Amanda Nunes, who is the current title holder. Good for her. Yeah. Hopefully she doesn't have the same fate as Punk. <laughs> oh, that was embarrassing. Moving on, another bit of news. Alberto Del Rio named president of Combate America's oh, MMA yeah. promotion. Corporate Del Rio. Nice. So he, uh, I guess it's been rumors for a while that he's been become the president, so now he is a president of a MMA promotion. He also went on today by saying that he would love CM Punk in that promotion as well. He's his amigo, I guess. Yeah, uh, I guess. Yeah, if Dana White's not getting him a shot, why not? Del Rio owns an MMA company yeah. now, so Alberto El Patron, now. <laughs> El Presidente, El Presidente. <laughs> Alberto El Presidente. <laughs> Should be his new uh, name. And speaking of Del Rio, Del Rio released a statement to the New York Post regarding Paige's claims and uh, family members' claims of her uh, suspension being BS and Del saying Rio that she that only took BS. a prescribed drug. Um, Derby says, Soraya Jade Bevis, who is Paige's real name, tested positive for an illegal substance, not a prescription drug. And in addition to WB, is providing uh, world-class medical care for her injury. So some mixed, some mixed things going on here. So. I don't know. Del Rio had said that uh, Paige getting suspended was like the same old shit. Just yeah. it depends on where where your status is on the in the company. Yeah, and She's Paige is uh, actually going right undergoing neck surgery. Uh, this coming Wednesday, and she'll be out of in-ring competition for six to nine months. Well, fingers crossed for Paige that the surgery goes. Yeah, well it's a it's a good recovery and oh man, like Nikki Bella because Nikki Bella looks really yeah. good right now. I'm not going to see Paige now for another year wrestle. 
Oh, you gotta gotta find a replacement. Uh, Bailey, she's up there, and she's my next girl. So I'm just gonna have to follow Bailey for a while while Paige uh, recovers. Paige will be back. She's still young. She's only 24. Yeah, I know. Then her let's, contract let's take, goes until like yeah. 2019. Let's take a so. step back. She will be back. She yeah. still got lots. She's, of maybe she can take the next nine months to you know mature up a bit. Mature a bit. Yeah. She's been a baby. I'll admit, as much as Paige is my girl, she's been a really big baby about this whole situation. So maybe she can finally see you know let's not risk my career for some guy okay and how and how you know he del rio's del rio took steroids like how can you get behind that i know it's, it's your boyfriend <laughs> it's your lover you can't get behind that you gotta like be okay well my boyfriend fucked up i, I you know i gotta focus on my career as and well she, and she's got to man up to what she did because obviously she was yeah. careless with not handing the exactly. papers whatever so yeah. hopefully she comes back better than what and she i hope that was not true she's just trying to do this on purposely to get you know the three suspensions then she's automatically fired you know what i think this might be a good thing for Paige though because even near the end before she got suspended it didn't seem like she was really into it anymore it seemed like she was getting tired yeah. Of, yeah. of i don't know they weren't putting her in the right spot she wasn't getting she wasn't didn't seem like she was excited to be yeah. there anymore yeah well because so, like when they first brought in the women's revolution she was the head part of it with pcv but now she, they just kind of forgot about her. Yeah, so I'm hoping now that she'll be rejuvenated. Kind of like Randy Orton when he came back. Yeah. He was like, we were all like, holy shit, this is a new Randy Orton. Yeah. So I hope we see a new page that we saw in NXT and when yeah. she first got called up. I really hope so. I hope this this whole injury is a way to repackage her, get her mind into it, and get more focused. If not, I'm going to be really distraught. <laughs> we'll see from a year from now. <laughs> but other than that, guys, that's it for the headlines. And that's going to be it for the Lowdown Show it. this week. That's going to be definitely it. For week number 27, our Lowdown Show, Brand Wars on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. We are your Canadian based WWE podcast that discusses and reviews Monday Night Raw and Tuesday Night SmackDown from the past week, as well as our Twitter poll segment, the Luke Gallows polls, and WWE headlines where we talk about any important news in the WWE. And guys, remember every week the Lowdown Show is broadcasted live on Spreaker at Spreaker.com slash NHBWP. And after it's done, it is posted on fold for you on YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes, Spreaker, and Stitcher. We are everywhere for your enjoyment and easier and convenient for you to listen to us. And remember, every week, guys, if you'd like to join in the conversation, I'm speaking to you YouTube guys out there, join us on Twitter and tweet at us at no holds bar, WP, and join in on the conversation. Or by, you know, you can leave us a comment on YouTube as well. As much, as much, whatever you want to do, whatever's easier for Same you. Same thing with YouTube, Max 3. Yeah, Max 3. <laughs> as always, guys, I am your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host, the Kyle glorious. Masters. Kyle the glory. Oh, thank you. And every week, I am continued to be joined by my co-host, the boss. Mr. Corporate himself, the glo- or the glory. I almost said the glorious, the blissful, the blissed off from this week. Corporate Cappy. Hopefully, I get back to blissful next week. I hope so too. And guys, we're always here reminding you to keep it on the lowdown. Sorry, that, but what you gonna do?